Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink. It is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Welcome to my 3.21 challenge guide. This is going to go through all 40 challenges in the 3.21 Crucible expansion and give a few tips on how to complete them, as well as talking about whether they're at the nastier end or at the easier end compared to all of the other challenges. A couple of quick general notes though. There will be chapters in this video, so if you need to jump to a specific challenge, you'll be able to find it down below. I can't put a chapter for every single video, so we'll be grouping together the straightforward ones. Straightforward doesn't necessarily mean easy. For example, one of the longest challenges is Dense Domains. It's very grindy, but it's very straightforward as well. So we'll be skipping those when we're putting chapters down. Anyway, this is the easiest set of challenges that the game has seen since Arch Nemesis and possibly even further back. Some of the last leagues have had some difficult ones, uh, Sentinel in particular, but this is definitely the other way around. There's nothing that is really terrifying in this. That said, two of the challenges are pretty mean. There's the level 84 Forge of the Titans, which is quite rare, and there's one challenge that requires you to do it about 10 times, and there's also another challenge that requires you to use the level 80 Forge of the Titans a very large number of times, and to farm a lot of Crucible XP. That one is going to take a long time, even if you do it efficiently, and if you don't do it efficiently, it is going to be a complete nightmare. So we'll come to that one later. I will quickly comment that I'm not going to be covering the ruthless specific challenges here, except to say that if your goal is to get the challenge reward set for having 38 challenges, you can also get that same set by getting 8 challenges in ruthless. However, the path of least resistance is definitely to ignore ruthless here. Ruthless's challenges are straightforward, but they are tough. And I think that universally players will find it easier to do the challenges in the base game and save Ruthless only for people who are specifically interested in running Ruthless because they prefer that game mode. I'm also going to use crucify as a verb in this, uh, not with its normal meaning in the English language, but instead it's just going to mean to put crucible XP on this item. I needed to find a way to think of a word for that. And whilst that's obviously not the usual meaning of the word, it just makes so much sense that I couldn't not use it. Endgame Grinds is normally the nastiest challenge, and that is not true at all in 321. Gear Grinding Goals is the easiest it's ever been. It's on the path of least resistance to go for 38 challenges, and maybe even 35. Now, if you're doing 38, you are definitely skipping Towering Titans. This is the hardest challenge of the lot. You probably want to try to do Ever Extending Evolution, but if RNG frowns upon you with that one, you do have the out of instead doing the Peak Pinnacle Prowess one, which requires you to do four of the Uber bosses. So you're going to need to do one of those two challenges. If you're in Trade League, you can get other people to kill your bosses for you, and that will be the easiest way to do Peak Pinnacle Prowess. Now, one thing you definitely don't want to do is neglect the big grind challenges. Dense Domains and Sacred Scarabs will be on any realistic pathway to 36, I expect, and you want to make progress on these now. Start these now, especially if you farm off Atlas content a lot. This also goes for the Master Mission ones as well. There's a pretty long Master Mission one. You want to be on top of that. You don't necessarily need to have it done now, but it's good to be three quarters of the way through these challenges early, and then you can just finish them off later. That's my usual approach. Focus on the grindy ones now, and then the other ones you can pick up as you go. So let's just quickly state the non-league basic stuff. Six of these challenges are easy, three of them are grindy, and one is genuinely hard. So we'll go through all of these. These are things you would do during normal gameplay in Path of Exile. So these are not requiring you to go out of your way in any way. And these are things that would be on your progression throughout the league. Although for some players, you might not get them completed in a single league. So beginner's basics is just to do a lot of really basic stuff like equip a four link. Act adversaries is just killing the act bosses. This is just mandatory progression. Dangerous deeds mostly requires you to do a breach, which you'll be able to find probably within 10 maps on average. Pantheonic Prowess requires you to do most of the skill point quests in the game. Achieve Ascension requires you to do the fourth labyrinth. And now we come to the really grindy ones that are in this category. They're very straightforward. It's obvious what to do, but these are going to take some time. Let's start with Dense Domains because it is one that there is a tip for. This is the one that requires you to do 15,000 pack size on all your maps. Now there's a few things you can do that are not really all that sustainable, like certain unique maps can have 50% or more pack size. However, what I suggest you do here is allocate growing hordes on your atlas at some point, and then make simultaneous progress towards dense domains and sacred scarabs. With growing hordes on your atlas, you can then use four polished scarabs on every map, using ones that you don't really have any interest in running while you're mapping normally. This will then give you 28 additional credit to dense domains, and it will give you eight points of credit towards sacred scarabs. You'll get sacred scarabs first, but dense domains will be making fast progress as well. 
If you find yourself falling behind on dense domains, you can allocate Grand Design as well on your Atlas. Now, Grand Design is something that doesn't play well with a lot of Atlas strategies. So you'd only really want to do this if you're willing to sacrifice some loot in order to speed up your completion of dense domains. But it is a very valid option. But I would recommend you consider that if you find yourself in a spot where you're pretty much finished with the league, you want to move on, and you've got 12,000 points towards dense domains. At that point, just unspec one mechanic from your atlas, spec into grand design, spec into a lot of content blocks, and then just blitz maps and you will get there quickly. So Sacred Scarabs is next. You get one point to this for Rusted Scarabs, two for Polished, three for Gilded, and four for Winged. And I would suggest that you get the five-way map device as quickly as practical in order to speed up Sacred Scarabs. Once you've got the five-way map device, you'll just be able to make faster progress on this. And Polished Scarabs strike an excellent balance between quick progress and also not costing all that much. You will find that Scarabs are something you don't have very many of early in a league, but 1 in 12 Eldritch Minion Alters will have a Scarab option once you get to endgame, and that will really help you solve all of your Scarab shortage issues. Eldritch Elation is next. This is long but simple. This requires you to do a lot of dangerous mapping with Alters, but fundamentally it is just doing things that will be generating you a lot of currency anyway. You probably want to run this while you're mapping in general, and just deal with the occasional death that it causes. Now, Eldritch Elation is a very different beast if you choose to play in Hardcore. If you're playing in Hardcore, you definitely want to take the Atlas node near the southeast corner of the Atlas that causes monsters in your maps to have 50% more life and to deal 25% less damage. You probably already have that in Hardcore, but it's much more important when you're trying to do Eldritch Elation. Finally, where the last three were grindy, Awakened Atlas is hard instead. In order to beat this, you're going to need to be able to defeat the Feared. Maven's Invitation the Feared is the hardest of the Maven's Invitations. The Hidden and the Elder Slayers also don't pull any punches either. Do note that you can do these on a Scoured Invitation if you have to, and doing so will make them considerably easier, but will also make them considerably less rewarding. I will leave that decision up to you. A quick note on what Nod Depth is, because it's used a bit and it's not really clearly defined, but the Strength Int node here is Depth 3, now, if you had allocated this node down here, you would not be able to take the depth three node on this crucible tree. In that situation, this would actually not be considered a fully allocated tree because the amount of XP that you'd have would be one bar out of two. So for an item to be considered fully allocated, you need to have one of the rightmost nodes actually allocated on the item. Now, it takes about one, three, six, 10, and 20 maps respectively to fully crucify an item that has depth one, two, three, four, and five, assuming that the item level is reasonably close to the zone level that you're doing the crucification in. If there is a difference between the item level and the zone level, however, you'll find that this approximation will be more and more progressively wrong. So let's group together the four challenges that are the simplest when it comes to crucible mechanics specifically. You have melted machinations, which is just gonna require you to do about four crucible in area events, that's all. Spreading strength is going to require you to allocate a depth five node. This is going to take about 20 maps to do, and it's a fairly rare option until you get to about monster level 75. You can get Depth 5 nodes as early as Act 5, and if you do, those are going to be the easiest ones to level up, but you're probably going to want a Depth 5 one to use for yourself anyway. Revealed Repertoire requires picking up some weird bases and crucifying them, but you don't need to do all of the base types, and none of these are particularly hard. The least resistance path is probably going to be to trade for an experimented axe that has 20% increased maximum quality on it. You don't need to go to this extent. This one's just a really forgiving challenge where you don't need to do very many of the different things. Finally, we have Potent Potential. This is an RNG-based challenge, but it's a very forgiving RNG-based challenge. You only need six different categories of Crucible mods, and you will get this one by accident as you crucify your own upgrades. All right, next we have the Vendor Recipes, and I'm gonna group these two together. Firstly, you need Movement Speed Boots. This requires a Quicksilver Flask, an Orb of Augmentation, and boots that have no more than 25% move speed. You'll receive back magic boots that have one tier higher in move speed than the boots that you inputted had. If the boots you inputted had no move speed roll, then one tier higher will be 10%. For a two stat amulet, you need two different single stat amulets, for example, a jade and an amber, and a transmutation orb. This can be quite a useful vendor recipe for leveling sometimes, so it's good to have a reminder there that it exists. For Chaos Orbs, you'll need a rare item for every inventory slot, with bows counting as a two-handed weapon and not requiring a quiver to go with them, and the lowest item level among them needs to be between 60 and 74. You'll receive multiple Chaos Orbs if everything is unidentified, and or if everything that accepts traditional quality, i.e. Armourers, Scraps, and Blacksmith Sweatstones, has been raised to 20% quality. 
For Chansorb, there are a couple of different options. One of them is to just repeat the Chaos recipe, but the minimum item level is less than 60. Another option is to vendor two rare items with the same name. This won't come up much in normal gameplay, but it is something that you will see very often if you run strong boxes. Okay, Vendor Recipes 2 is similar to Vendor Recipes 1. It's a bit harder because the input items are harder to get. You're going to need to source a level 20 gem here. And through natural gameplay, you'll usually get that about character level 88. So that can give you a bit of a sense as to how far away that is. Additionally, there's often other recipes for a lot of these. For example, for an influenced item, instead of the recipe I'm going to suggest here, you can vendor a cold and lightning two stone ring, a cold and fire two stone ring, and a fire and lightning two stone ring all of which have the same influence as each other, and you'll receive back a prismatic ring with that same influence. However, the path of least resistance, in my opinion here, is going to be to take an influenced amulet, with corruption being okay, and one blue gem, one red gem, and one green gem. Vendor all of those in one transaction. You receive back an onyx amulet with the same item level and the same influences, and this onyx amulet will be scoured, and if it was corrupted, that corruption will be cleansed from the item. For a regal orb, you want to use the chaos recipe, but with a minimum item level of 75 or above. For a unique item, I recommend that you vendor the four Agnarod staves together. This is because another challenge is going to require the output here, which is Vinktar Square, the unique map. If you're not interested in doing that unique maps one, then you can always vendor three copies of the same unique item. And three copies of the same unique is probably something you will get reasonably early in progression before you get yourself a level 20 gem. For a 20 quality gem, you will want to vendor a level 20 gem and a gem cutter's prism. Next, we have a number of challenges that relate to past leagues. Most of these are straightforward, the harvest one is not. So, Abhorrent Abysses is going to take a bit of time, it's going to take a number of maps being run with Abyss spec on your Atlas, and the limiting factor is generally going to be defeating Stygian Spires. Essence monsters with six essences can only be done in two ways, either from one of the Atlas memories or if you allocate Crystal Lattice on your Atlas passive tree. You can do this one in low tier, and that might help you because they can be pretty tough fights. Now to get your Corruption-only Essences, which are the Hysteria, Horum, Delirium, and Insanity ones, you're going to want to remember this little jingo. Corrupt, Purple, Meds. Misery, Envy, Dread, Scorn. These are the ones that you want to corrupt. These essences are all purplish in colour, and when you corrupt them, they'll have about a 25% chance with non-essence tree and 33% with an essence tree to transform into one of those corruption-only essences. There are some non-purple essences that begin with the same letters there. For example, there is Spite, and that's not going to be something you want to corrupt. But Essence of Spite from memory is red, and as a result, it's pretty easy to separate that one out. The Abyss one will take you ages if you're unspecced, but it'll be quick if you spec Abysses, and it'll also be quick if you use Gilded Abyss Scarabs to speed it up. Now, Past Leagues 2 is going to cover Ambush and also Monstrous Metamorphs. These are not particularly quick challenges. They're not particularly hard either, but they're not particularly quick. Now, for Corrupt Rare Boxes, Val Temple and or Strongbox Atlas, or you can take Val Orbs with you into Elva's Memory of Cascading Fortune. These are going to be the best ways to do that. Val Temple is particularly good though. You can see I haven't done a Val Temple this league. If I had, it would have given me more than 10 credit for this one. For the unique box, you want to check Kirak missions, because there is going to be another challenge later that's going to require you to do it that way. You might find a unique strong box normally anyway, that's what happened to me, I haven't done the Kirak version of it, but if you want to definitely get this one done, Kirak missions will be where to do it, and that's something you're going to need to do for one of the later challenges anyway. Now for monstrous metamorphs, defeat full power metamorphs in maps is almost automatic if you are running metamorphs in high tier content. If you're running them in low tier content, you often won't fill up the bar on the right hand side of Tane's Vat. But if you're running them in yellow and red tier maps, you'll almost always do that. As a result, you will probably get that one pretty automatically. Defeating Metamorphs with at least 5 monster modifiers is at the nastier end. So these monster modifiers are the rare monster mods, things like Fires Mortars. These will be something that you will be able to tell if they're an option or not. You'll need to intelligently select your Metamorph organs in order to get this, but it is one that you should be able to get reasonably easily. And yeah, I wanted to clarify this a little bit during editing. So what you're going to want to do here is pick the organs that are not sourced from unique monsters. You want to pick the ones that come from rare monsters and that come from magic monsters, as these will will be the ones that will have a rare monster mod on them usually. You'll also need to ensure that the five different mods are different to each other. But as long as you do that, it should just take a little bit of thought, it won't be particularly hard, you'll get credit for this one easily. For the final one, Defeat Full Power Metamorphs in Tane's Lab, this is pretty much automatic if the organs that you submit to Tane 
a high enough level. I believe the breakpoint may be about 77, but I know it will definitely work for 80 plus. So as long as you put in 80 plus organs, then you'll be able to get that done. Okay, so next we have more of the past league ones. We have Hushed Heist here. Now this one's straightforward enough, but it will take an afternoon here. There's quite a lot to do in this one. Caches can be forced onto maps with Kirak and or with Sextants, or you can get them easily enough through RNG. This part's easy. It's gonna come up while you're doing normal mapping. High value and better contracts are pretty common, even if you don't take the node to spec into them. I suspect it's a 40, 30, 20, 10 split between moderate, high, precious, and priceless. And if that's correct, 60% chance for a random contract to be one that will count for this. So you're gonna have no trouble getting that there. To spend rogue markers unveiling blueprints is pretty easy. You're just gonna to need to own 20,000 rogue markers and run a few contracts. These will come together while you're completing your high value, precious, and priceless target contracts. Then we have complete blueprint wings. Now, if you have a high spec atlas, you will have no trouble just getting enough blueprints for this. And what you wanna do is unveil additional wings if the rewards are good enough to justify it. But if the rewards are enchanted armaments or if the rewards are trinkets and currency, then you probably only want to do one wing of that blueprint. And that's simply because those coins would be better spent elsewhere. Now, while you are doing this, you definitely want to do your quest heist, at least some of them, because you want to have the prerequisites for the twins done. There is a challenge requiring you to do the twins in this league, and as a result, you're going to want to be trying to farm that up with hushed heist. If you do have a high spec atlas and you do all of the relevant twins prerequisite contracts, which start with Hyrie's gift, then proceed to the negotiation and the rescue, then in that situation, you'll get a lot of copies of the twins. I think I have five or six copies of the twins sitting in my stash at the moment. Now, Expedition Excavation Part 4, complete logbooks with at least 10 remnants active. This is the hardest part of this challenge. Now, I'm going to suggest that the last part of this you do in level 83 zones. And that's because there's a 10 to 15% chance to get an Expedition boss to spawn when you run an Expedition logbook. And you want that to be in a level 83 zone. You can then just make a beeline to the boss and get credit for one of the harder challenges that's going to require you to do an Expedition boss. But that one specifically calls out that it needs to be a tier 16. Everything else in this one is straightforward. It's just going to take a bit of time. Finally, we get to the horrible one here. This is the nasty past league one, Hectic Harvest. So we have a very nasty RNG component here, and we have a more forgiving RNG component that's still pretty mean. Defeat at least 10 tier 3 or greater harvest monsters in a single map is horrible to get this one done by pure RNG. There is a way around that, and we'll come to that in a sec. Defeat Harvest Bosses is a more common occurrence than getting 10 Tier 3 or Greater Harvest Monsters, but it's also rare and you're going to need to get three of them. In short, getting these through pure RNG is going to be tough. The alternative, however, is to use the Harvest Memory. The Harvest Memory is expensive, but it will pretty much do this entire challenge for you, and you will also be able to resell all the Harvest Goo that you get from it for at least most of the cost of the Harvest Memory back. So you're going to need to do one of two things here. Either acquire the Harvest Memory, either through a very lucky drop or through trading for it, or do a very large amount of mapping with a Harvest Atlas spec. If you do decide to go the latter way, I do recommend that you take the fairly bad node 10% chance for the unchosen crop not to wilt. Even though it's only 3.15% more tier three monsters, it is still worth it. You still want to have this one on there. And now we come to Divine Destiny, the challenge that looks really easy and actually isn't. I want to go through how you would do this in Solo Self Found. Trade League players, just be aware that you can bypass a lot of these by just trading for cheapish divination cards. So for instance, for a Scarab, you can trade for Camiria's Cut, go for small set sizes and cheap and plentiful cards, and you won't have much trouble with this. But in Solo Self Found, this is going to be a pretty nasty one, and it's going to focus your Atlas choices quite a lot. So, let's go through what you want to do here. Firstly, Grotto Map is going to be very good for this one, because it drops Divination cards for a lot of these. So for a six link, Chains That Bind is your best choice. It is more common now than Humility, since Humility was nerfed in 3.19. Other cards will be compared to Chains That Bind in Rarity. So for instance, if I think that it's going to take about as long to self-compile a full set of another div card as it takes to farm 70 copies of Chains That Bind, then that card would be said to be 70 on the chain scale. Most cards for tier one Rarity Uniques will tend to be about 400 on the chain scale. For a Unique Jewel, this one is really nasty. There's a number of genuinely really terrible Unique Jewels, but they're also quite rare now. So things like Pacifism, 
There's a divination card for pacifism, but you definitely don't want to try and farm that. You can trade for it, but if you're going to farm something yourself, I suggest that you go for the Primordial. This is the best of a bad bunch, and it's about 70 on the chain scale. Stack decks might also give you some of these, and you're going to get about one copy of the Primordial per thousand stack decks that you rip on average, but you might find that you get luckier than average there, and that can save you some farming of your Grotto Maps. For Scarabs, I'm going to suggest Man with Bear over a couple of the other options. Camellia's cut's fine as well, but Man with Bear is in an excellent map, Cemetery, and it's 30 on the chain scale. So it actually is going to take you a lot more maps to get a set of Man with Bear than it would to get a set of Chains That Bind, but it's something that you can do while you're looking for a very lucky drop of Brother's Gift. For an influenced item, there is one correct choice here, and that is the Jeweler's Boon. This is a 15 on the chain scale, and it is drop restricted level 80 plus. Guess what? It drops in Grotto Map. For level 21 gem, you have the Rite of Elements. This is another Grotto card. Drop restricted, item level 72 plus, and it's 26 on the chain scale. So you can see here that all of the farming of the Primordial that you're doing is really helping you get these other cards as well. And that's why Grotto is so important here. For a unique map, you might accidentally get a full set of Justified Ambition from doing Elder Slayer's encounters. Or you might accidentally get a full set of Wolf's Legacy from Grotto. But failing that, Encroaching Darkness drops in all tier six and above content. It's pretty rare, but that doesn't matter because you're going to be getting it while you're doing other mapping. I think it's pretty safe to say that you will be able to turn in sets of Encroaching Darkness. Do not go for any of the cards that give you a specific unique map, except possibly Scholar of the Seas. All the rest of those are really, really rare. A lot of the card rarity information that went into this was stuff that came from Poor Fishwife and the POEWiki.net team. They've done some fantastic work in tracking down the rarity of pretty much every divination card in the game, and I'll put a link to their research down below. So we have a little bit of a treasure hunt here, crafting curious commodities. This requires you to basically have knowledge of what these items are. All you've got to do then, once you own the items, is apply a Chaos Orb to them. Three of the bases are fairly exotic, but two of them are things you definitely would loot yourself, but you might not recognize when you've got them. So an Abyss item is a Stygian Vice or Jewel. Note that it needs to be level 83 or above as well. For an Atlas base, these are the bases that have very high minimum levels, but that don't drop from special content. These are things like bone helmets, crystal belts, gripped gloves, and a few other different items that have unusual and generally pretty good implicits. For expedition, you need a ward base here. These are actually kind of rare. You get about one of them per 50 in-map expeditions, and about 10 times that rate of drops in logbooks. So this is something that you'll hopefully get while you're doing the expedition challenge. If you're in solo self-found, you're going to need to farm it yourself anyway, and you might need to do some more expedition in order to do it. If you're in Trade League, you can definitely pick these up cheap. Throw a Chaos Orb on it, and then just on-sell it to someone else. Again, this is something that's going to push you to be doing level 83 Expedition content. Experimented items come from Replica Heist. So these are the rare item bases that often replace Replica unique items in those Curio cases. Now there are two Divination cards that grant experimented items as well. One of them is from Uber Bosses and is not something you're likely to self-compile. The other one is a tile set drop in a few forge themed areas, and that's something that you could consider going for, soul quenched, but I think you're likely to get this while you're doing the heist challenge, so I don't think you need to worry about doing that. But it's there as an option. Maraketh bases are drop anywhere bases that have unusual implicits for the base they're on, so this is things like Eclipse Staff or Profane Wands. These do not have unusually high item level requirements like the Atlas bases do. These will also always be weapons. And for rituals, it seems like it's about 1 per 15 in-map ritual events that will give you one of the ritual bases. These are things like the Archdemon Crown and the Nexus Gloves. Now the next one, Empowered Entanglement, is not going to be on most people's pathway to 24 or even 30. And this is the one that requires you to kill all 6 of the Crucible bosses whilst you're in level 81 and above zones. Now you will get this by accident if you're running Towering Titans. But Towering Titans is going to be most people's 39th or 40th challenge. Empowered Entanglement does require you to do one of the bosses that pretty much only seems to appear in the higher level Forge. Empowered Entanglement can't be done in the level 80 version of the Forge, but it can be done in the level 84 Forge. And that's going to be something you're probably going to need to do one of, because one of these bosses is quite rare outside of the Forge. So that one's the Reaver of Drones. For all the others, tier 16 mapping, charge up the Forge to 100%, 
and it doesn't seem to matter if you are doing it in an unjuiced map. This is actually a pretty difficult combat encounter and it's going to be one of your last 10 challenges for most people, maybe even one of your last five. We have the unique maps challenge again. So this challenge has been copy pasted from 320, 319 and 318. Most of these are drop anywhere. So let's start with the two that aren't. Vinktar Square comes from a vendor recipe where you vendor all four Agnarod staves in one transaction. These have their drop rates gigabuffed in patch 3.19 and you'll have no trouble farming these. And there's also a divination card for them in Strand that drops all the time. So this divination card is something like six on the chain scale. It's easier to compile a set of the Stormcaller than it is to compile a set of the chains that bind. Just make sure that you have these staves and also these divination cards on your loot filter because that's a nasty trap you can fall into, is removing them from your filter and then thinking, gee, these don't drop at all. Doriani's Machinarium drops from Ahua Totli the Blind in Delve. Now the path of least resistance this league is definitely to ignore Delve entirely and to instead focus on comprehensive scouting reports instead. Then you will get this eventually with Kirak missions. They infrequently offer Doriani's Machinarium, but you will eventually get Machinarium if you keep throwing scouting reports at it long enough. Obligatory editing clarification that this is comprehensive scouting reports only for Doriani's Machinarium. No other correct missions, no other scouting reports. Now we have the Twilight Temple, Coward's Trial and Putrid Cloister. These need a bit of a call out because they are all quite rare. These are tier 3 rarity unique maps I believe, but Kirak missions and scouting reports will get you there. Whatever you do, don't farm the divination cards for these maps. They are far, far, far rarer than you would expect them to be, and you will do far better by doing scouting reports instead. It'll just be the path of least resistance to get this challenge done. And next we have the bossing challenge that's at the easier end, Elusive Executives. This is medium difficulty combats. Ashabi and the Essence Monstrosity are the hardest bosses here to kill. It's mostly about getting access to these fights that will be the difficult part of this. So for the heist boss, this has to be the twins. This has prerequisite quest heist. Hyrie's Gift, the Negotiation and the Rescue. You will need to do these. And once you've done these three, then in your maps, you'll be eligible to have the twins drop. Alternately, in trade, you can simply trade for the twins if you want. Now, if you're Abyss Spect, Abyss Liches aren't all that rare. They are uncommon, but they're not genuinely rare. For Metamorphs, do this in Tane's lab and it is trivial. For Expedition Bosses, it's about 10 to 15% while you're doing logbooks. Remember how when we were talking about the Expedition Challenge, I said you probably want to do these at level 83 and not do lower tier logbooks? This is the reason for that. Don't juice these bosses unless you know what you're doing. You do not need to trade for guaranteed boss logbooks. These tend to be way more expensive than they should be, especially when there's a challenge like this. For Essences, the easiest way to do this is the Atlas Memory. The hard way to do this is going to be to take all of the Essence nodes on the passive tree and then rely upon RNG. When you find an Essence monster that has seven Essences on it, you then apply a Remnant of Corruption to it and there'll be a 33% chance that it will upgrade to having an eighth Essence. And finally, we have Ashabi, which is a very rare fight to get access to. Ashabi is definitely the hardest part of this to unlock and one of the harder ones to kill as well. She's not that hard a fight, but she does put up a fight in a way that the heist twins don't. Next, we have Commander's Challenging Chores. Now here, this is mostly about one of them that requires you to do something tricky. So option five is common, find the Sack of Divination cards. Numbers two and four, so the Labyrinth Trial and defeating the Atlas mini boss are uncommon, but they're not particularly rare. One and six, the Blighted Map and the Unique Strongbox are quite rare, but all of those ones are straightforward. It's the Breach Lord one that can be difficult here. Basically, this is going to require you to spec into otherworldly scouting reports in order to get this one done. Of course, you can respec out of it as soon as you've sourced one single out of the worldly scouting report. In trade, you might actually want to stay spec into Kirak though, because otherworldly reports keep getting more expensive as the league ages, as do the comprehensive scouting reports as well. So both of these will become more and more expensive over time because more people will be willing and able to pay to get this challenge done. Finally, if you struggle with the Blighted maps and you've got no real experience with Blight, there's an easy way to do Blight. There's actually a few easy ways, but my favourite one is to anoint Indigo and Violet on one ring, so that will be Meteor Towers leave Burning Ground, and then on your other ring, anoint Opalescent and Silver for Chilling Tower Damage Inflicts Freeze. With this combination, you'll find that you'll be able to just play Blight as a tower defence game, and it will be a very easy and forgiving tower defence game as well. You want to upgrade tier 4 media towers, but only to tier 3 when it comes to the chilling towers, and you want to have some of the empower towers as well. That's the tier 3 green towers. If you do that, you'll have no trouble completing blighted maps. 
Cross contamination is next, and this one is straightforward because you only need three. Some of these are not trivial to do, but you can do this on any atlas with no setup required. For a metamorph and a breach, you need to use both scarabs on a single map, rusted ones are fine, clear the map but ignoring the breach, come back to the location of the breach, set up the metamorph next to the breach, bring it to low life, open the breach, kill the metamorph, done. For Beast and Essences, just use Einhar Missions and Kirak Essence mod. This is RNG, but it's RNG with the odds in your favour. It's probably only going to take you about four maps. For Expedition and Delirium, 20% Delirious map with a rusted Expedition Scarab. There you go, you've got that done. You can also do Abyss plus the Shrine pretty easily as well. This just requires you to equip the Unique Helm at the Gull, if you own that, and place some Abyss content and you'll get it quickly as well. But the Path of Least Resistance is probably the other three. Definitely don't try and do Defeat a Delirium or Beyond Boss while in the Sacred Grove. This is possible, but it is a lot of setup. Ever Extending Evolution is next. Now warning, this is RNG, this is nasty. This is a lot of people's 40th challenge. It's a lot of other people's 39th challenge. And for some people, they get lucky and it ends up being like their 36th instead. And then there's people like me. I have parts one, two, and three done on my first three forges. And all I need to do now is part five in an Uber forge. Remember that you need four of them, not all five. We're gonna talk a lot about this one because there's a lot of things to put together with it. Items need to be fully allocated. So this means that one of the rightmost nodes on the crucible tree needs to be allocated. The limiting factor for this challenge is not access to the forge. This is the mistake a lot of people make with this. They look at this challenge and say, oh yeah, that's just one where I can buy 20 forges later in the league and do it. No, it's not. It is crucible XP that is the limiting factor. It is going to be your time leveling up those crucible weapons because you're going to need to level a lot of them for this if you get unlucky. Asking around amongst people that have done this, Act 6 items seem to strike a good balance between having enough Crucible mods on them that they've got a reasonable chance of proccing what you want here, but also requiring a low amount of XP. So you can go to the vendors in Act 6, or you can even just go and farm items in Act 6. If you don't yet have the upgraded tier, there is a fairly rare and fairly expensive mod that's available on level 84 forge entry tokens that have a mod that you can search for on the trade site by using the string tilde CRU space tier space up. This makes Crucible mods likely to upgrade their tier. It has a 10% chance for them to upgrade, and this will mean that you'll get it pretty quickly. Now, in order to get the downgrades, this one can be quite tricky. Here, what you're going to want to do is crucify lots of low item level bases. Now, what you're looking for is three depth trees that you can fully allocate quite quickly in a small number of maps. Then you want to smash these together. You also want these to have nodes that can downgrade. So you're going to have to have a look through, does this have nodes that can downgrade? If you find one that does have nodes that can downgrade, then what you want to do is use this as the recipient item and then put other items as a donor onto it. This seems to be the best strategy and the people that I've spoken to that have managed to get this challenge done in less than 15 runs of the forge, this has been their approach for doing that. Of course, each run of the forge is gonna take a bit of setup because you're going to need to look for those three depth trees. Asking around, it doesn't seem like there is any firm agreement on whether it is useful or not to have the trees be the same shape. But enough people say that it has helped them that I'm gonna suggest that that's worthwhile. So what this means is that you'd be merging trees together that are the same shape, i.e. if you have the top of each column allocated, that then gets merged together with another tree that is all top. The key thing though is that the item that goes into the bottom of the forge has the capacity to downgrade and also the items need to be fully allocated. My plan for this challenge is actually going to be slightly different here because I want to combine this with attempting to make currency. I'm going to source item level 86 spine bows and I'm going to check it for mods that have tiers. If it has a fair number of them, I'm going to fully crucify this to depth 5. This is then going to be my recipient item for a bunch of forging. I'm then going to source low tier bows and I'm going to crucify them. Then I'm going to tree merge them onto the spine bow, hoping for a downgrade. We can also fail with style. One of the merge exclusive mods that you can get, Rampage, is incredibly valuable. If you do hit Rampage on an item level 86 spine bow, then you'll be able to split that and each half will sell for more than 100 divine orbs at the time I'm recording this video. This is not something that's common and it is a merge exclusive mod, so it would require you to get skill mutates into another. But if you do hit this, it is an absolutely phenomenal amount of wealth you've gained there. It's the sort of thing that will set you up with a mage blood. There's a couple of other mods that are a few divines as well. They're not as ridiculous as getting Rampage, but cold damage per 10 decks, you'll be able to split that into two bows that will sell for eight or so divines each as well. So 
You can definitely fail with style and that's what I'm going to go for when I'm making my plans for doing ever extending evolution. The unique part is straightforward. You need to do this in the level 84 forge. You need two copies of the same unique item that both have a crucible tree on them and then you can just merge them. Just make sure that you have allocated the rightmost nodes that are possible on each unique. Now 13 mods comes down to the quite valuable mod on the forges that you'll find if you do the search string tilde CRU R-E-T-A. So this is items forged in the Crucible are more likely to retain their mods. It makes mods less likely to go away. And note that merging trees does not ever move nodes around. So you can have a look for this one. The 13 mods one is gonna take a while though because they need to be fully allocated. And that's going to take 30 or so maps to set up. And because this challenge is so heavy on the RNG, that's the reason a lot of people are on 38 or 39 challenges already and do not have ever extending evolution done. Okay, so from something that is completely merciless to something that at least has Merciful in the name, although this is quite a grindy challenge, Merciful Masters, do not leave this challenge until late. This is going to take quite a bit of time. It's a lot more than one afternoon of gaming at a casual pace. Nico and Einhart you can use Scarabs for, and Elva's Memory of Reverse Incursion is an absolute godsend to do her part and to do it very, very fast. Missions are fine too, especially if you like incursion content, but one memory will do over 75% of what you need for the Elba side of this. Jun actually requires fewer missions than the others, so you don't need to invest at all in Jun Master Mission Replenish. And interestingly, you can do this one in any tier. So if it is something that you find yourself stuck with late, then you can do it in very low tiers if you need to. Gifted Gem Cutter is next. The RNG ones here that you need, which involve using a Val Orb, are 25% chances to hit. So these are not particularly hard to get. While you're playing, you generally want to have six copies of your main skill leveling in your offhand, and then Valing them once they reach 2020. If you do this even once, you'll probably have the level 21 or 23 quality one done. If you can't get a Val version that way because your main skill doesn't have a Val version, then just buy Molten Shell Gems and Val them. Very common uniques will do the rest. Bronze Lithe is the easiest way to get level 26, although Cold Iron Point, Replica Cold Iron Point can get you there if you use two of them. And Bitter Dream or its replica will work for six support gems. So there's a lot of other ways as well. Those are the ones that come to mind. Next, we have Meaningful Memories. So in trade, this one's trivial. Some of the memories are very valuable, but they're valuable because they drop a lot of loot. Other ones are particularly cheap, and those ones won't drop anywhere near as much. In fact, often they'll drop less than a normal map would. And so those ones are not particularly popular. You can use any of them, but the valuable ones are actually worth your while considering using. Remember that completing an Atlas memory map means killing the boss. It doesn't mean interacting with any of the specific mechanics of that memory. For Solo Self Found, this is going to be a difficult one. Map a lot in tier 14 plus where memories can drop. And I do mean a lot. I suspect that memory lines are about 100 times rarer than maps, although I'm not really sure on that because there's no serious research that's been done. They also do not drop in off Atlas content like Heist. So this is going to be something that if you're in Solo Self Found is going to pull you back to playing on the Atlas rather than in other content. Next we have the Molten Master one, which requires you to do Crucible encounters in complex ways. So here you've got to kill a Crucible Rare in tier 16 maps with five specific conditions met. These conditions will not need to be met all at once, and these are not made equal to each other. Four monster mods will happen by RNG. 100% quantity and eight mods will come together. So the first time that you do a Crucible encounter in an eight mod map, you'll get this one. For Delirious, all you need to do is a 20% Delirious map. It's a lot easier than messing around with the mirror. For Eldritch Altered Downsides has quite an RNG element to it. This is not possible on every map, but being able to get it isn't very hard. This is much easier to do in a map where boss altars aren't a thing. For example, Jungle Valley. Jungle Valley is a bit of an oddball here as the boss doesn't spawn the instant the map is opened. And therefore boss altars in normal circumstances are not eligible as an option in Jungle Valley. The other three of them are pretty easy to skip. I would strongly suggest that you do the five that I've suggested there. For Celestial Compass, note that you need three of these and not four. Strongbox Enraged is a rare and valuable sextant, so skip it unless your Atlas strategy revolves around Ambush, in which case you will have done this as a currency generation strategy. If you're playing in Trade League and you happen to roll Strongbox Monsters or Enraged by chance, I strongly suggest that you seal that sextant and you sell it to someone else, then just buy the others. If you roll one mod of a pair, seal that one and put it aside until you have the other one. And remember that it needs to be tier 16 and it needs to be 80% quantity as well. Easy to forget that one and realize, oh, why didn't I get credit for that? Oh, because I used a 60% quantity map. Towering Titans is the next one we're going to discuss. This is the 
other contender for the hardest challenge this league. This requires many, many runs of the top tier Forge of the Titans. This is the level 84 one to get all the required kills. These Forges of the Titan access keys are rare and expensive. If you're in solo self-found, your only option here is going to be 100% juice on a lot of Crucible encounters in tier 16 maps and just hope for the relevant Geo to drop. If you're in trade, you want to be doing these in rotations. Fair warning, this is not on any plausible least resistance path to 38 challenges. There are much easier choices. This and ever extending evolution are the two that you are going to be missing if you're going for 38 in most circumstances. Uh, next we have the boss hard modes options. Now this one's interesting in that there are five options presented. Three of them are quite accessible and two of them are very difficult. So the trial master is hard to access. It's quite the ordeal to get to his tower. And all's one is very, very difficult as it requires very precise play on a fight that's already pretty tough. So we're gonna completely ignore the trial master and all options and discuss the other three. At Zuri, this one is very hard to do if the Maven is on because you'll normally get tagged by a storm call, but it's not so bad if the Maven is not active. Logout macro will really help you here if you do get yourself in a spot where you're a bit cornered, but even without that, this is definitely something you can do, but probably not on your first attempt. For Chayula, you wanna get the boss under 25% health, then just focus on dodging and prolonging the fight. Portals will spawn and you won't be in any real danger. Tag three of the portals, and then once you've done that, then go back and kill the boss. For Azaro, here you need burst damage. This is one of those spots where you need a tremendous amount of burst damage in order to do this. It is very difficult to dodge Ornamental Cascade for an, any sort of prolonged fight, but it is very possible to just burst Azaro, even in the level 83 labs, to burst him down quickly, because whilst he's got some hit points, he is not as tanky as a boss like the Shaper, much less a boss like Ubercirus. The exploding totem trap builds are incredibly good on this. And one of the things that you'll find if you're playing in solo self found, your path of least resistance to 38 challenges probably actually does entail leveling a t exploding totem trapper so that you can then do the Uber bosses and also do fortuitous feud and get Azaro out of the way here. Next we have the harder bosses. So we've gone from hard modes on normal bosses to genuinely hard bosses. Here you need to pick four of the pinnacle boss encounters and do them on the uber version. So for solo self found, your path of least resistance here is going to be to level a totem explosion trapper build. Level a character for that and do all of these bosses on it. Some of the bosses are still pretty hard on those builds, but the ones that you can burst down really fast, uh, that's Searing Exarch, Eater of Worlds, they become much easier. In Trade League, your path of least resistance is to engage a boss carry service, either from the Forbidden Trove Trade Discord or from Trade 820. You'll be able to negotiate with players there, work out a price, and generally this is going to cost you about a divine and a half to buy from other players. And in Hardcore, your path of least resistance is to not do this challenge and to do something else on your pathway to 38. And then we have the final part, which is the gear grinding goals. Before GGG got into alliteration as much as they are now, gear grinding goals was always called endgame grinds, and most of the player base still refer to it as EGG. Now this requires you to do four out of six things that are meant to be fairly grindy. However, GGG just set them pretty easy. So defeat rare crucible monsters in areas of level 83 or higher. You will get this through natural gameplay if you're engaging with crucible mechanics at all, and you'll get this long, long, long before you have your ever-extending evolution done. For Activate Eldritch Altars, or Defeat Witness Map Bosses, but mostly Activate Eldritch Altars, this is something you'll get through natural gameplay, and again, the numbers are just not all that unreasonable. For Defeat 4 Modifier Rare Monsters in areas of level 83 or higher, this again will just come up in normal gameplay, although it is something that you can turbocharge a little bit if you elect to run Tier 16 Blight Maps, Blight Ravage Maps, and or heist blueprints. Heist blueprints in particular are very good. They'll need to be monster level 83, so tier 16, but they will be very good at getting you through those. So you need to get those three done. That's just a matter of playing the game a certain amount. After that, you then focus on one of three things. Either you focus on leveling, or you focus on boss killing, or you focus on ruining Azaro's day by killing his dog over and over again. Now Argus will be in room one of the lab about once per fortnight on average. Before that day happens, you want to buy all of those offerings that you're going to want, and then you're going to want to blitz them, potentially in rotations with other players. I do think that rotations are the best way to do this challenge, although most people tend to do it solo. 
If you group up though, you'll be able to do it completely on autopilot. It is a very boring challenge. It's honestly a really bad choice for a challenge because it's not an end game grind at all. It's a mid game grind, but it will be on the path of least resistance for most players. If you're wanting to push level 100 instead, the best way to do that is going to be to join five way domain of timeless conflict groups. These are generally very organized and very efficient and they tend to be organized in both the same places as the boss kill services. So the Forbidden Trove Trade Discord and also slash Trade 820. Both of these places will have very experienced people running these services nonstop. They make a huge amount of currency out of doing it, but it is the most efficient way to get level 100 if that's your goal. Uber bosses, I would only suggest doing this if you are intending to do a very large number of them. Maybe you're wanting to try and farm a specific item. And this is something I would only recommend considering if you're in trade league. It's not going to be on the path of least resistance, but it is something that's pretty reasonable if you've decided that you want, for instance, to farm up mage blood this league, then doing the uber bosses can be a good way to make some progress towards that. Anyways, that's the challenges for this league. Me of have interesting results and I will see you around.